me some ice. Just give me a pinch and save a buzz for my pillow. Salt me a bronze. Talk to me now, she got to wine. And the time I'm getting hungry. Fill me a grave. I'm Laura Bonicelli, and we are cooking with Italian style. It's not always fast, it's not always easy, and it's not always Italian. We use the freshest and finest ingredients that we can find and afford, and we not only savor the meals we make, we savor making them. That's cooking with Italian style. This week, I'm catering a party, and the star of my buffet is a 17-pound whole salmon that we are going to poach. So, let's get cooking. So you're probably wondering how I wound up with such a large fish. Well, actually only 70% of this fish is edible. You have the head, the tail, and the backbone, um, which aren't edible. So what I figured was about four ounces per person, and I actually wanted about a 15-pound salmon, um, but they had a 17-pound salmon, so here he is. Anyway, what we're going to start with is getting rid of the fins, good pair of kitchen shears, and I'll start by cutting off the dorsal in the back. Okay, our fins are all gone, and I am finishing brushing the whole fish inside and out with a little white wine vinegar. You could use um, white wine, or you could use lemon juice if you want to. The point is acid, and I did the inside and the other side already, and now I'm going to sprinkle the whole fish inside and out with kosher salt. Now I'm stuffing the inside of this with some sliced lemon, and I did quite a lot of them, about three of them. And I've got some dill and Italian parsley too, and I'm just gonna layer these all the way along and that will flavor the meat while it's cooking. Now we're gonna actually cook this guy standing up and curved. So what I'm gonna do after I get all of this in there is just throw it in there like that. I'm going to um, take three sheets of heavy duty aluminum foil and stagger them, and you'll see what that looks like when we move the fish. And I'm going to spray them with cooking spray so that the fish does not stick. And that is really important because if the fish sticks, you lose the skin and the meat will start to come off as well, which is not good. Okay, this is looking good and I think I can get my last couple in here. All right, now I'm going to transfer the fish to the aluminum foil. Well, I lifted my salmon onto my aluminum foil. I have three sheets going this way and another one going this way because he is so big. It's probably a lot easier to deal with a smaller fish. And what I did then is I put a piece of aluminum foil on the inside while I turned him up so that all of the stuff I put in there wouldn't fall out. And then I set him on top of two of these. And these are actually little container things for artichokes when you steam them, which I've never used them for, but they work great as stands for standing up a fish. So there, those two are underneath here making this kind of stand up. And then I took some strings so that it would have this really pretty curve and it'll actually cook like this and stay this way. And I tied the head right behind the gills Oops, just slipped a little bit. To the tail, so it'll cook in a curve. Now, all I'm gonna do is bring this up and start tenting him in. And then, once I get all this done, I'm gonna lift this off of this sheet right onto my rack in the oven, 250 degrees, and I wanna cook it to about 125 and 130 or 135 degrees. And I will use an instant read thermometer and I'll start checking at it at about an hour and a half. So here's my fish right out of the oven. And it took about almost three hours to cook him. I wasn't really sure how long it would take. And I always check it in the thickest part to make sure that that is up to the temperature you wanted. In this case, we hit it at about 127 and I took him out of the oven. So I'm just cutting his strings off to free him. There we go and see how he stays in the perfect shape. And now what we wanna do while the fish is still hot is just basically do an incision right around his head. I'm gonna take the skin off. So we just need to get through the skin, not a lot further, like that. And then I'm gonna take my knife and start peeling it back. I'll do the same thing around the table, tail. And this is like really careful work, so you have to have a lot of patience. Now that I've got his head sort of freed of skin, I'm gonna go right down the center of the top and peel back from there. Okay, and that's coming along. 
that's coming nicely. Okay. Get as much of that in one piece as I possibly can so I'm not disturbing the flesh. And you can see how it has that beautiful pattern right down the side. And this is pretty much what I'm going to do for the whole rest of the fish. And again, I'll make an incision right here when I get down to the tail end so that I can leave the tail intact. Voila! <laughs> Basically got all the skin off and now what I'm doing is I'm just going along the top of the fish. There's kind of a little crevice here that leads to the backbone that has a lot of fat and it's kind of this gray stuff that you want to remove to expose, expose the flesh. So I'm going along there and pulling that out. So now that we've got that done, we're going to scrape down the side of the fish. Now this is, I use a sharp knife for this, but you have to be really careful and kind of go with the grain. What you want to do is get rid of the gray layer of fat, but keep that beautiful orange flesh showing up. Just going with the grain and pulling it off very slowly. Well, we're really getting there. Now, a couple of things I wanted to point out. When you're cleaning this top part, which goes down almost an inch and a half, make sure you run your finger along the inside and pull out any bones that you possibly can while you're cleaning it there. And also, along the side of the fish on both sides, there's this kind of a seam, and a lot of fat hides in there, and you need to just be aggressive and get it out of there. And I am going to finish this guy up, and then we will get some help, I'm going to get some help, and move it on to my serving platter. What I decided to do was move the fish onto a full sheet pan, and then I'm going to use this not only to chill them down in my refrigerator, which this actually fits in, but I'm also going to use this as my serving platter so I don't have to move them again. They're a little bit delicate, and I did get them on the platter with the help of a friend and a couple of these, which I don't use very often, but boy, I'm glad when I do need them, I have them. So. I'm going to tent this lightly with some saran wrap, put it in the fridge to chill it down, and then we will garnish. I'm finishing this off now by garnishing with a couple different colors of lettuce, and I'm running some lemons right along the top, as you can see. This, by the way, is my dill pollen mayo, which is also, I think I have enough lemons, also on my website, solobybonicelli.com. You can just look for the recipe. It was, uh, goes perfectly with this salmon. And the beautiful orange color of the salmon is just great. And I'm just putting a little oregano across the top now just to finish it off. Very colorful. Okay, just a couple more. This is going to be so perfect on my buffet. Okay. That's it. I really hope you enjoy making my poached salmon and cooking with Italian style. Buon appetito!